It's a very, very natural thing to want to know what the future holds for us. We're always curious. Many people will go to astrology, they'll go to seances just to find out. We're curious. And for whatever reason, God acted and acts in the way that he did and does. He doesn't let us know ordinarily the future. He wants us to put our whole emphasis on the now. If we try to dabble with the future, we make it difficult for ourselves because we can never, never really fulfill the purpose for which we exist if we're always in the future, thinking about the future, worrying about the future. But you know, let me tell you something. In the scriptures, Jesus bawled out to the apostles that they did not take time to read the signs of the times. Meaning, therefore, that there are certain indications as to what will be that God has built in, even in the scriptures. He just does not leave it all open-ended. There is within his own divine plan something which concerns you and me, and the now and the tomorrow and the yesterday. What comes now to mind is what the Spirit asks me to present to you, that there are signs of the times, that there are something, that there is something on the way that we should be alerted of. And that is the end of an era just like there was the end of the Old Testament in favor of the new. So we are given some evidence that there's going to be a new, a greater New Testament. We're in transition. But God always worked in, in a different way, uh, not ever the same way. When there was to be a new cleansing of the earth, God sent a flood. God snapped the earth and snapped evil away from it. And we are being forewarned that something like that might happen again. And we are being forewarned not to cause us to be petrified or to become depressed, but to be alerted and to prepare ourselves for what it is. And what is it? A cleansing, a purification, in order to begin a new God wants to begin anew with people who love him, with people who put evil behind themselves, themselves behind themselves, money behind themselves, and put him first. That's what he's looking for. Anything that has been built from pride will be destroyed. Now, to prepare ourselves, I'm not speaking of food or getting some type of machinery or to get picks and shovels, or to get a refuge as far as the body is concerned, to make the body just a little bit more comfortable should the Lord snap the world and cause, let's say, electricity to fail, or cause a great earthquake. I'm speaking more of the heart, to prepare myself for whatever it is, and to make myself that docile. Whatever you send, God, okay, I'm ready. Now, what is the best preparation? The best preparation is prayer. And what does that mean? It means that I connect myself with God internally, really, truly. Lord, and then he, he responds, yes, I would like to talk with you. Okay, he says, I'm listening. What would you like me to do in order to prepare for whatever it is you're going to do to the world and perhaps to me? And he says, I want you to trust me that whatever it is, it'll be for good of yours and for the good of many. I'm not a God of vengeance, but I'm a God of mercy, but I'm also a God of justice. And therefore, I want you to stay close to me and I will tip you off as far as your behavior is concerned so that you know within yourself that you're doing exactly what I want you to, and so that you and I get along. Because that's what it's all about. 
I gave you a free will to do the things freely that I want you to do. I didn't put you on this earth and say, well, make a life of your own. Whatever you do, it's okay by me. I didn't put you on the earth for that. I want to be able to work with you so that ultimately you'll be a source of joy to me. And because you are that source of joy, that you will have a happy life. Now, prayer is what that is. We were praying. We were talking with God and we listened to God. And it's very personal. It doesn't have to be so formal. Our Father who art in heaven, it's better our Father who art in heaven. What he is asking for is that we turn to him and give him the credit he deserves. And it's not credit by patting him on the back, but it's a recognition, hey, you're God and I'm your creature. Hey, I'm not mine, I'm yours. And whatever you want, I'll do it. That's the best preparation. But you see, it's by way of an interaction between myself and God. And God is personal. He's not a thing. He's not a force. He's very personal. He knows me by name. And he wants me to call him by name. My God, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And there is that person, Jesus, whom God the Father gave to you and to me to help us, both of us, all of us for that matter, to be ready for what's coming. For Jesus is the one who has given us the seven sacraments. He wants us to make use of them. Jesus is the one who has given us the church. He's the one who has given us the Holy Father. He wants us to keep our ear, our heart's ear, to the Holy Father, to the, what comes through, to what comes through, through the church. He wants me for sure to become genuine, sincere, and humble and be real before him because we cannot communicate unless we are real. He is real, but we have a tendency to pretend. We have a tendency to be afraid to face ourselves. We have a tendency to run away from ourselves. We have a tendency to run away from God. We have a tendency to do our own thing to put him behind us, and we don't want authority. We don't want to have anybody to tell us what to do. So, to prepare for the future, put your act together as a human being, as a Christian, as a father, as a mother, as a student, whatever you are, put it together. Put it in context of life, whatever it is. If you're a specialist, if you're a mechanic, put it into all context of life. Have charity in your heart, even as you are helping people. Be honest, be truthful, be just, be, be lovingly available to anyone who comes to you. That's the best way to prepare. Do not be frightened, but be aware that what is coming is coming in favor of God the Father, sending our way justice. He's merciful, very merciful now, in preparation for what is coming. And what is that? As I mentioned to you, it's purification. So don't fear, but bear down. Just like when you're driving in heavy traffic, it's a different kind of driving than a leisurely Sunday afternoon driving. When you're driving in heavy traffic, you bear down. Bear down with your life and say to the Lord, Lord, I want to do it right. Whatever it is you want of me, I want to do it. Help me. And the help will be there. So whatever the future is, let it be. We concentrate on the present and favor the future so that when the future unfolds to you, you'll be ready. And you remember that particular, what, it was not a, yes, it was a parable, it's not a real story, the five foolish virgins and the five wise ones. The five foolish ones went out and did things that they should have been, 
that they should have done before. The five wise ones bought oil with them. So be wise in prayer. As Our Lady tells us, ask the Father and He will tell you what to do. Keep your heart open and your mind clear so that you form a union with God the Father, you as a child, that whatever it is that He expects of you, that you'll do it. And let the future be whatever it will be, and no fear needed as long as you bear down. Bend to your Father and do what He wants on a moment-to-moment -moment basis.